Black Bodies and Veens, and Stefan Boltzmann's Laws. I like this one here. It burns. I'll explain why that's awesome in a second. So we're going to talk about something called a black body. And it sounds racist, but it's not meant to be. What we mean here is something that is perfectly black, which means it's a perfect emitter or absorber of radiation. And we're going to assume that stars are this. And the reason we do that, well, first of all, they do behave this way. But it's because we can be really do something really helpful by looking at what happens here on Earth. For example, the temperature of something that's glowing. For example, the element on a stove, like an old school stove like this right here. If you look at the element on a stove, and you know, so you heat it up, for example, to a very specific temperature, then you can look at its peak wavelength that it emits, what color it looks like. It turns out the color is related to the temperature. And because stars behave just like these, for example, then if we can look at the maximum intensity of a star, in other words, what wavelength or in other words, what color it is, we can tell then what temperature its surface has. That doesn't tell us the center temperature of the star, but it does tell us at least, hey, a black body that was heated to this temperature would have this you know, same characteristic wavelength. So the color of a star is related to its surface temperature. I think that's a piece here that we need to know. And it turns out, like I said, is by looking at objects on Earth, for example, on their color and temperature, we can characterize a star's surface temperature as well. So, for example, if we look at a, a, a candle here, you'd think that a candle, well, it's really hot, isn't it? I mean, we say something is red hot, must be really hot. No, it turns out it's not as hot. For example, something here at the top is sort of reddish, for example, it's actually cooler. It's certainly cooler than the bottom. The bottom part right here is actually really, really hot. It's sort of bluish hot, but actually this is hotter. So something that's blue or white hot is much hotter than something that's, for example, red hot. So let's talk about Wien's displacement law. Maybe I'll start off by just writing the equation first. It goes lambda max times t equals 2.9 times 10 to the minus 3. And then write mk like this. This is on your data booklet. Now let's talk about the different uh, variables. First of all, wavelength of the maximum intensity. What that is, is that if we have something right here, like it, the light that's emitted from a star doesn't just come out in one wavelength. It's a whole spectrum. So it's a whole bunch of different colors, but there does exist a wavelength at which there is a maximum intensity here. So we've got a graph here of intensity of the light. Don't worry too much about the units, it's not as important, uh, versus the wavelength here. So the wavelength uh, of the light in meters. And so the wavelength of the max intensity, we're going to measure that in meters. The temperature, uh, that's going to be T, it's going to be the effective, or what we call the surface temperature. and That'll be measured in uh, Kelvin, for example. And what's really important about this equation, notice it's mk here. You might think that's like millikelvin, but no. What we mean is we mean meters times Kelvin. Okay, that's actually really important here. So, I don't know, this is just a bit confusing. They should have just left it as 2.9 times 10 to the minus 3, and just know that it's in meters in Kelvin. Oh well. Let's talk about what this really means here. So let me show you with PHET, good old them here. So let's look at this one right here. This is going to be the spectrum of a star like our sun. And I want you to look carefully at the intensity of a light here. That's this top part right here. So it's this peak. See it kind of go up or down, and we're going to see it shift left or right. So for example, if I have a star that's more uh, warm than the sun, so hotter black body temperature, do you notice what happens to its peak? Do you notice its peak is going to the left, and it's going up, of course. If I bring it back down to the sun, let's do the opposite of that. So let's say as I make something that's cooler, so I'm going to bring this temperature down, and do you notice what happens to the peak? Do you notice from the sun it goes down, but it also goes right? Do you notice it start off over here and it move to the right? What that tells you is uh, that as things get cooler, they move towards the right of the spectrum. Here. In other words, towards redder colors. So this right here, for example, is an attempt to show what it would look like. Like If you just look at the visible color of it, notice it goes like redder and redder and redder. For example, way up here, really, really hot things are sort of bluish, just like the candle, like I showed you before. So this is something that's actually quite helpful for us. And do you notice then, so things that were hotter, I wrote it blue because, you know, blue is kind of hot. Um, but if I take something that's cooler, for example, so what happens with that? Well, remember, something is cooler, but go down and to the right. So, for example, I could maybe draw myself some kind of peak that goes, I don't know, maybe like this. I mean, I'm not perfect at drawing these, but something like this right here. So notice on this peak right here, 
that would be this lambda max. That would be the maximum. That would be the wavelength where it has the maximum uh, intensity. And this right here would be something that's cooler, for example. And so what we get from this right here, we get that this exam tip is, hey, uh, by the way, it helps to know that blue is around 480 nanometers, red is around 600 or so. But what's really important is this, that hotter things are bluer, so that means they're more to the left, and they're higher peaks. In other words, they go left and they go up. Things that are cooler go down and to the right. So that, I think, is the key here to understanding this. Now we have Stefan Boltzmann's law, which tells us uh, something about the luminosity of a black body, for example. It goes L equals sigma AT to the fourth. Again, this is not something you have to memorize, it's on your data booklet. Before we go anywhere else, I'm going to do this exam tip. It's important to know the equation for the surface area of a sphere, which goes like the surface area of a sphere equals at 4 pi r squared. That is an important thing to know. Why? Well, because that's this A here. In other words, this A right here that's in this equation, that's a surface area of a sphere, which is 4 pi r squared. Keep in mind, it's going to be in meters squared. That's going to be the units. What's the luminosity of a star again? Oh, yeah, that's in watts. Now, sigma here is a Stefan Boltzmann constant, so it's just 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8. I like it because it goes like 5, 6, 7, 8, kind of, with a minus there. And T is a surface temperature of the star that's in Kelvin. So there we go. So now we're ready to do an example. So we have two stars that are being investigated, Alnilan and Bellatrix. And these are actually real stars that are in the constellation Orion, which you can see in the northern hemisphere at least. It's really easy to spot at least because it looks like uh, these two stars here plus these three and these two. It kind of looks like a big giant kind of R in the sky. But Bellatrix, that's this one right here, so that's actually B. And this one right here is Alnilan, which is actually right here. That's actually star A. So let's just say they told us a bunch of facts about them. We know the luminosity of Al Nilan is yeah, 275,000 times the luminosity of the sun. Remember, that's what this is. And this one is only 6,400, the luminosity of the sun. The radius of this star is 24 times the radius of the sun, whereas B is 6 times the radius of the sun. We know the surface temperature of A, of Al Nilan, but we don't know the surface temperature of B. In fact, that's what we're trying to find. So how do we do this? I think it would help us out, first of all, just to write the equation uh, that we need here, which is L equals sigma times AT to the fourth. But remember that the surface area right here, remember what this is, this is 4 pi r squared. That's where the radius comes in. So uh, maybe I'll write it like with a capital R then, just so that it looks like these capital R's here like that. So really then, I've got this equation, then it's going to go like this. It's going to go L equals, I'll just write it down like this actually. So we have L equals sigma times 4 times pi times r squared, all that times t to the fourth. This is my generic equation then that I need to figure out. So then what can I do? Well, I can write it for B then. Of course, I'm looking for B, so I'll say LB, luminosity of star B, is going to be equal to sigma times 4 times pi times rb. Do we know the radius? Uh, we do, yes. Um, times tb to the fourth. But here's the problem. I mean, I know the luminosity of b, but it's in terms of the sun. Do you see that this is the problem? Is that I don't know the luminosity of the sun. I don't know the radius of the sun. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to use ratios. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, maybe I'll write that down. So use ratios. So what does that mean? That means I'm going to take uh, an equation for LA as well, and I'm going to do LA and LB, and I'm going to divide them. I think that's maybe the best way to go, because that way at least all the luminosities here will cancel out. Because you might have also been wondering, why did they bother giving me stuff for A when all I want is B? Well, this is why. So that means I'm going to make myself an equation for LA, and I'm going to divide that by LB. So let's see here. Let's actually start doing it. So LA, well, it's going to be sigma times 4 times pi times RA squared, all that times TA to the fourth, all that divided by sigma times 4 times pi times RB squared times TB to the fourth. Does anything cancel out? Thankfully, this does. The 4s and the pi's do. Okay, so now I'm left with, I'm just going to rewrite it so that I've got LA over LB 
is equal to, let's see, I've got ra squared, but remember what ra is. ra is 24 times r of the sun, and I've got to square that. All that over rb squared, so that's uh, 6 times radius of the sun squared. All that times temperature of A, which is 27,000 to the fourth. All that over T, B to the fourth. Now this just becomes just a bunch of really ugly algebra, but we can do this. We can figure out actually, oh, we know LA, don't we? We know each of these. So we can say even further, we can say 20, uh, 275000L of the sun. Divide that by 6400. L of the sun here, that equals, let's see, it's going to be 24 squared R sun squared, all that over 6 squared R sun squared, all that times 27,000 to the fourth, all that over T to the fourth. And now, by the way, it's not just T, it's TB, that's what I'm looking for. All right. Does anything else cancel out? Sure, the L's do, the R0 squareds do, and I can even take away two zeros from each of these. I'm just trying to make it a little bit simpler. So now I've got 275 with a zero actually, over 64. All that equals, let's see, what's 24 squared? Actually, we can just do this on a calculator, can't we? Let me just open up my calculator and say, okay, what is 24 squared? That is uh, 576. Okay, so 576 over 6 squared, which is 36. All that times, uh, well, this big number, I'll just leave it for now because it's huge. All that to the fourth. All that over TB to the fourth. Well, if I want to get TB uh, to the fourth uh, on its own, I'm going to put it on the left side. So I'll say TB to the fourth. That's going to equal, and I'm just going to move these by flipping them. So that means it'll be 64 will be on top. So I have a 64 here. I'll have a 2750 on the bottom. Don't forget, I still have uh, this 5, oops, 576, all that over 36, all that times 27,000 to the fourth. And remember, when I'm done with this right here, I'll have TB to the fourth. I'll have to take the fourth power of that. But let's just do this on my calculator. So basically, I'm going to do all this right here, hopefully get an answer for TB, and I'll be done. Let's see here. All right, this is kind of messy, but I think I can do it. I'll just do it all here on my calculator. I'll do a big, giant fraction. I'll say 64. What else is on the top? I've got a 576. What else? I've got 27,000. Wait, how many zeros was it? Yeah, 27,000. Oh, I got too many zeros. There it goes, 27,000, but don't forget, this thing is to the power of 4. Okay, all that divided by, let's see, I've got uh, 2750 times 36, and I get this answer. Remember, oops, I want my answer in uh, like an actual decimal. And remember that this is what t to the fourth is, so how do I get rid of that? Remember, I do the answer to the power of 1 over 4. So that's uh, how I would do it here. So I get 1 over 4, and I end up with, oh man, yeah, something like this. So 21,091. Now, what are the units? These are uh, degrees Kelvin. And don't forget, I have to actually um, do this to how many significant figures? Let's see, I've got 2, I think, is the least I can use. So I'll do this to 2 significant figures, so it'll be 21, and everything else will be zeros. so 21,000, like this right here. That'll be 21,000 Kelvin. That'll be the approximate surface temperature of B, of Bellatrix. What does that tell you? Well, it's actually cooler than this one right here. And if it's cooler, that means it's a little bit redder. So this wavelength, you know, its peak wavelength should be a little bit more in the red because it's a little bit less than this. There we go. That's how we can use these equations to solve something pretty big and pretty long, but we totally can solve it.